So it, it seems that every few years of your life, you go through like some very life altering incident, whether it be, you know, that accident when you were a teenager, whether it was the, the fall that almost took your life, the year 2020 mm-hmm. almost took your sanity. So once the smoke has all cleared, how do you channel those experiences into creating music? Mm. Uh, I think with those experiences uh, comes, I would say, one, you just, you get, you get a bit of wisdom that, that changes life perspectives for the rest of your life. And so in the process, as you're writing music, you're also changing in the process as a person. And, be, and because of that, my music begins to change. Um, and so I think, um, I think in the end, uh, you know, f- for me, I think one way that all of my experiences end up influ- ah, influencing my music uh, is it pushes me to be myself. It pushes me to be honest about where I'm at. Um, if people know me, they know I'm an emotional person but I'm a very honest person at the same time. So in my music, you're going to get a lot of passionate honesty out of me. Um, You know, things about my life, things that I'm realizing, things that I'm understanding about myself. Um, It's, it it, it pushes me to become the person that I really am in my music. And so, um, you know, I'm not, at this point, it's like when I write, I'm not just trying to, um, I'm not just trying to write something that's catchy, like, I'm writing to make the most honest statement that I can in my music, um, something that I believe in the most. That's why at this point, it's like, I, it's hard for me to just write a bop because bops really don't have nothing to do with like you for real. You know, it's really just something catchy for everybody. Um, at this point, I'm like, man, it's got to mean something to me because everything that I've went through has meant something to me. And because I write about my life, well, my music got to mean something to me. And so, um, yeah. And so, you know, this, this journey, I think I've, you know, God has graced me with, I think, man, it's a blessing that I'm able to, you know, put my journey or my experiences into words, you know, where people can benefit from them. And even myself, I can look back and say, oh, okay, let me see where I was at uh, as an artist or as a person a year ago. And I could just look at my music and see where I was at because I was speaking about my life then. You know, so it's it's an opportunity for me to see growth as well, but also it pushes me to be comfortable with where I'm at, you know, at the same time, whether I'm wrestling or I, or I made it or I got through it, you know, so. Oh, man, thank you. And and Cut, I think you can pull a little bit of a follow up out of that, right? Yeah, most definitely, most definitely. Um, that you, you touched on being honest in your music, transparency, and really just rapping about your life. Um, the one thing that I wanted to kind of uh, touch on was I'm, I made it, bro. You were super raw. It was unfiltered. Um, just a person of the events that happened to you over the past uh, year and a half, two years. And um, you spoke with wrestling with suicidal thoughts, with popping pills, even losing faith in God due to all that was going on in your home and across the nation. Um, first and foremost, I just want to commend you for your transparency because a lot of artists, you know what I mean, they, they, they took it away. And like you said, they would rather choose to, to be on billboards or choose to do these other things uh, to hide the pain so that they can continue on. You know what I mean? Not knowing that, that what you're doing is helping to heal other people who think that they're alone in this fight. So I just want to continue to uh, commend you on that. Um, Thank you. Especially in our space. Um, have been through similar trauma over this past year though. Uh, What was the turning point for you and what wisdom would you share with others who may be struggling in secret? Um, I would say the turning point for me is, I think for me was my sanity. Like I felt like I lost it. Like I felt like I was losing it. And I think it just got to a point where I had to figure out why I was feeling the ways that I was feeling. Um, I think I had to get to a point where I could talk about it, talk about my childhood, talk about my life experiences, talk about how I really feel. Like if I were to be honest at any point, let me be honest, um, you know? And so um, I think my turning point was, man, I, I, needed, I needed my sanity. Um, because a lot of stuff that was going, a lot of stuff that was happening in the world uh, was one driving me crazy. 
Um, but it, it had me feeling like I was crazy. You know, uh, people dying, unarmed black man dying. Um, I, I, at some point you feel like it could be you, you know? And so um, I had to get to a point where it was okay for me to not be okay. And just say, you know what? I need to be off. I need to be away. I need to process. Um, I need to be with my family. They need me, you know, and I, I've seen the, the detriment when I'm not present. You know, when you are the man in the house, you, 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 have, a, you have a presence in the house, um, you know, that, that, that's very influential. And I have to make sure that I'm present for them. Part of my turning points was me being able to say, I need to be with them. I need to be here for them because they hurt too. Um, and so I think, I think, um, I think for me, man, it, it's, it's being able to look around and seeing that, uh, man, I can hold on to, to this hurt. I can hold on to this anger, but at the same time, I got to move on. Um, it's, it's not going to help. It's, it's not going to heal. It's okay to not be okay. And it's okay to process in the time. Um, but you got to keep moving forward. And so, uh, you know, I, but I, in the same sense, man, I want people to be honest with where they are. Like, for me, like, I know if I can't be, if I feel like I can't be honest, especially in my music, that's personal. You know, in my, in, I, in my music, I talk about my faith and my faith is personal. But if I can't be honest in my faith and in my personal life and in my music, I'm going to lose my sanity. <laughs> I'm going to lose it. Uh, I have to be able to be honest. I have to be able to process you know, in, in the best way possible. Um, and so I think, uh, I think for me, man, I, I, I was able to just grow from that, from this season that I've been in, just realizing that, man, I can carve myself a space to be vulnerable um, and honest with myself, even if I know I'm not in the best space. I can carve out this space for myself where I can heal. Um, and, uh, and I think that's just what God has been doing with me, you know. Um, so, you know, for anybody dealing with that, uh, you know, anybody that's been on the edge, uh, stressed out, dealing with anxieties or PTSD or bitterness, anger, frustration, it's okay to deal with those things, you know. It's okay to be honest with where you are. And I know in my music, uh, people will hear that now, you know, um, and I think, you know, that for me, that was that was therapeutic for me. But you got to find what's therapeutic for you where you can get to that point and say, all right, man, this is where I've been at. But I got to be able to function. I got to be able to process and filter my thoughts. And by God's grace, I can use my words and my music to do so. But, you know, I also had to get counseling and everything else. You know, uh, you got to you got to, you know, search what's best for you. So. All right. All right. I mean, and you know, it it's, it sounds like you're in a in a good place. You've rebounded. You've made this project with poetics. Um, it's just showing the fruitfulness, sharing your heart. And there have been so many like rapper DJ combos in hip hop. You know, like Jeff and and Will, DJ Premier, I mean, Quali and High Tech. You know, I mean, but it's really yeah. in our space. And I know that poetics isn't necessarily a DJ, but this kind yeah. of our project puts me in a mindset um, of those kind of combinations when I first heard that you two were working together. Mm -hmm. So catalyst for this project and will you guys continue making music as a duo? Man, we, we put this project together um, primarily because one, we built a friendship. Like we, we, uh, we built a real relationship where, you know, we were able to just see each other work and see each other's lives. Uh, I remember before Poetics was really producing. That's when I met him. Um, and uh, he was like, man, I don't want to produce. I was like, well, come to my crib. You know, let's let's work. And, um, you know, we began working. And in light of that, like, his production continuously, uh, you know, it, it grew and it grew and it just matured. And I'm like, hey, I think it's time. Let's let's put some music out, you know. Then, I, you know, we end up putting out uh, Nino Brown and we end up doing some things, BT. Or, um, and then after a while, we just end up having some songs that's just like stacking, just we're, we're sitting on songs at this point. And I'm like, look, man, like, one, we got a ton of music that, you know, we we could do stuff with, but we should do something together for real, you know. Um, and so, uh, you know, he 
you know, we we got a real friendship where, you know, he talked to me about his problems. I talked to him about mine. Um, and it's just like, yo, we really have gone through some stuff. We really have made it through so much um, through, you know, business wise and also just through life. And in, in, in light of this journey, I've been able to see this friend, find this friend where we can like, you know, work, work together, walk together. Um, and so, you know, we made it is really a project of us literally like walking together in this business, in this industry as brothers uh, in life, you know, uh, it's just a genuine friendship, um, you know, but also just showing like, man, in, in the hardest times that you have, it's good to have a friend nearby, you know, it's good to have a friend that understands. He understands what we in the studio and I got a lot on my brain, you know, uh, but at the same time, like, man, he kicked me out of it. He'd be like, hey, come on, man, let's, let's get back to this music, man. Come on, man, and, not, and shake it off, you know? Uh, so, but yeah, man, we plan to make a lot more music together. Uh, you know, he he has definitely uh, carved out a good signature sound for me. Um, and I and I loved how he works in the studio. So we definitely will continue to work, man. Um, I got a lot of plans for him. You know, we, we, we work a lot in the same circles anyway. He worked with artists that I love to work with. Uh, and, and, you know, and I love bringing him around new artists as well. And so, um, yeah, man, it's, a, it's just a genuine friendship where, man, with, with or without music, you're going to see us around. So, yeah. That's dope. And, uh, yeah, Poetics is a guy that's talked about how um, it's important to maintain um, solid mental health and have yeah. balance in life like that. Um, yeah. So how beneficial was it for you to be working creatively with someone who values peace of mind like that? Yeah, man, I, it's, it's beautiful. You know, uh, you know, sometimes I want to complain about how tired I am. You'd be like, ah, oh, you're so old. You just... <laughs> and, and it's like, it's, it's, it's fun to be able to work with somebody who doesn't just want to sit there and, and, and just think about what's going, what's not going right. You know, I mean, we, we, we can all, you know, you know, speak about the things that we would want to, you know, see better or done better. Um, but it's good to have somebody in the studio that's like, like, hey, man, the idea ain't already there, but I love where you're going with it. You know what I'm saying? Like to have somebody encourage you in different ways, you know. And so, you know, just to know that, you know, mental health, and mental peace is something important for poetics and him having that mindset when he walk in the studio. I think uh, I think it's really important, you know, that I that I continue to let him just be himself in the studio because I benefit from that. You know, I get I find myself at peace when he's at peace and he's like, hey, man, let's just have some fun. man. let's not think about let's not think about the stuff that's stressing us and holding us down. Let's make some dope music. Let's you know. And so um, and so, man, it's, it's, it's crucial because without that, man, all my music don't sound like me being frustrated. You know, like I said, like I make music in light of where I am in life in light of what I'm feeling. I like to, you know, if, if I'm feeling great in the studio, I want to make a song about, you know, what I'm feeling. Um, and so, uh, you know, he is, it's good that he gets my head out of the clouds, you know, so I can make music where I can also help people get their head out of the clouds, you know, cause I'm doing it in the studio in that time, you know, so yes, yeah, it's, 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 it's crucial. Uh, mm. I was digging through the crates of like old interviews with you on Rapzilla and different things like that. So I know that you were mentored by Lecrae and you lived with him before you were married. And then mm -hmm. you were, you know, pivotal in Aaron Cole's life as he lived with you before he was married. And you mm -hmm. also talk about, you know, a young poetics who actually, I think he told me this story. You, you, Derek, guys like KJ52, like kind of helped validate him as a producer. So yeah. How important is it for you to kind of pay it forward? Like you were mentored and now you have people that you're kind of mentoring and giving wisdom and time to. Man, I, I say this. One, I'm just doing the best that I can to be a, a, a good brother to somebody else. Um, you know, I'm, it, you know, part of it is intentional, but the other part of it is, it's just like, man, like if, if I see a brother who has a lot of potential, why not, you know, give him some time? You know, if if I see somebody who is really trying and they they are putting effort and hours into it and ain't nobody got to ask them to, why not give them some of my time? You know, um, I think um, one thing I learned from Cray was to pour into faithful men, um, people that, you know, will show that they will show up. And, you know, people like Aaron Cole is an artist that will show up. You know, he will get his work done. 
uh, producers like Poetics are, are is a is a guy who will outwork many producers that I know. Like he he's when I tell him to send me a, a pack, he back in like seconds, he sent me like 30 tracks, you know, and they tracks that he nobody else has probably heard. <laughs> like, like he he has a ton of work just sitting ready for him, you know. And so I'm like, I see somebody like that. I'm like, man, you you got a lot of potential, man. Like you work. Yeah, if if there's any kinks or whatever that got to be worked out, like as far as like, you know, maybe you know how to send you know the right emails or whatever it might be, I don't know. But if there's things to work out, I'm like, let's work them out. But you got a lot of potential, you know. Um, and so I think it's it's important for me because I I I want to be able to support people I really believe in. You know, I I don't just support people because they successful. Like a lot of the people that are already successful, they don't need my support. You know, but it's the ones that nobody really know about that's really working harder than everybody else. You know, and so them, I'm like, yo, yeah, let me give it my, let me give my time, because they worth it. You know, everybody don't get that, but the people that I I decide I want, I want to give that time to, I give it to. You know, so, um, and some not all in the same way. You know, uh, some in a music way, some in a personal way. So, well, Candice, I was gonna say, man, I, I I saw that on his album, especially with. I made it because I know your man C Duffel, C Duffel, but the mother, you know that tag? C Duffel, C Duffel, yes. yo, yo, he, yo, he wanted uh, when you had to have shout, shout him out on your live and to see yeah. what you're talking about. The fruit of that is really there on, on the project. You just saw that seed, there's somebody who's working hard, who's not known, but it's really just humble and, you know what I mean? And a little Lord, man. Look, look, man, I'm a, look, say, look, like C Duffel was dope before me. You know what I'm saying? Like he he didn't need he didn't need no cosign. He still don't. Like uh he, like that when he sent me that track, that was what it was already. I didn't add nothing to that but my verse. Like 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 it was dope already. You know what I'm saying? So and he still he just put out a really dope song just now. So like I I've I like I, I remember when uh when uh, I, th- I think I came across one of his songs or or he sent me some music and I'm like, yo, this instrumental was fire. Yo, this instrumental was super fire. You produced this? He's like, yeah. And uh, I'm like, bro, you, you gonna, <laughs> like what, we gotta, we gotta work on this. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Um, and then I also found out he's an artist. And so I'm like, yo, okay. Like, and I'm thinking, okay, maybe he's a, maybe he's a really dope producer, but maybe he's probably a whack artist. Okay. Cause you know, sometimes it's like, Sometimes it's like, man, he's a really dope rapper, but very terrible producer or very dope producer and a terrible rapper. Like usually it's one or the other. He's destroying it on every level. He's destroying it, sir. On every level. So I say that to say like, he don't need a cosign for me. He never did, you know? Um, And that's the type of people I like to work with. Folks who don't need me. (laughs) You don't need me, you know what I'm saying? Like. Like I, I, I'm here to just help guide the direction that you may already be going, you know, but I'm not here to tell you where to go and teach you. Okay. Now this is how you know, it's just like, bro, you already killing me. I'm just going to throw a little, little extra gasoline on fire, but you already got some fire started. So, uh, but yeah, man, I, I love working with artists like C Duffel, man. He, he, he hard, man. He, he dope. So go check him out. If y'all, if, if you know, if y'all watching this, y'all listening, go check him out. He's super hard. Yeah. I've been I've been a fan of yours since probably like 10 years ago. I saw you the first time in Denver with uh, 116 Beat Breaker and Lecrae coming up and becoming more versatile as you as you grow. Um, being from Chicago, I think you probably get this, but um, I would equate you to like a Twista at the beginning. Like when you came <laughs> on, you were just like spitting fire, you know, and oh, now man. you're more like now you're more like Crucial Conflict, Do or Die, where you got the melodies going in, in, in there, too. <laughs> So yeah, what's it yeah. been like? What's it been like for you to hone your craft as you've uh, explored new styles? Man, um, I look at my art as limitless. There's nothing I can't do. Like, like, I mean, if you if you saw my studio, like I I do video production, I do audio production, I engineer, like, like I produce. My mind, the way it thinks, is if I can think it, I can make it kind of thing and so like when I'm writing my lyrics I'm like yo there is like let me hit any cadence that people are not thinking about or let me let me hit a pocket that you didn't expect um 
And so, you know, I love making my, my, my verses feel like a maze where you're trying to figure out where I'm going or where to go in it. Uh, I, I love, I love my, my, my music, getting people in, in inspired to make them want to do something or become something or feel something uh, more than just want to like shoot up the club or whatever. Like, it's like, I, I love the, the influence that I get from, for, like, for, for, for example, uh, Chicago or, or the South, because that, that opened me up to so many different styles and what people talk about and what people appreciate in the different cultures. Um, and so as I absorbed that as a child, man, I, I, I was able to put that in my music and I was able to just be, get, get to a point where I could communicate in ways that you might have heard somebody else communicate. Um, I'm real, I'm, 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 I'm real close to my faith. And one thing I knew about Jesus was he was able to communicate to anybody. And I wanted to be able to do that lyrically in my style. I wanted to be able to be able to have, you could put my style up to anybody. I can, we could go toe for toe. You pick a song and I'll pick a song and I'll show you. I'm like, look, I want this to feel like he can't do, there's nothing he can't do. Um, and so, uh, man, just listening to artists like, yeah, like Twister or Tech Nine or a Royster Five Nine, I would just say like, man, just being able to be in different regions and, and study the different music. Like I, I grew up and I grew up in Chicago, but at the same time, like I lived in Memphis as well. You know what I'm saying? I lived in, in ATL as well. I mean, I'm in Phoenix now. Like I didn't travel the world. I've been able to see all kinds of stuff, all kinds of experiences. I don't want to put that in my music. So um, yeah, man, I just, I look at it as one big thing that can't be boxed in contextual it can't be you, you can't you can't you can't compress it to something like it's it's got to be at its at its best at its fullness um and uh yeah because that's just who i am as a person